It represents a level of independence, and I, I like that. I, I don't know about you, Dad, but I'm welcoming it. I want I want 30 degree nights it's, it's and 50 degree days. We're over overdue. I yeah. Think. Some of our garden beds, we reused a lot of the salvage wood that we had up in the hayloft for, I think, all of our garden beds. Some of the wood that we used wasn't in the greatest condition, and now several years on, we can see, you can see it's starting to rot and go way past its prime. So as kind of a temporary fix, I think eventually we'd like to upgrade to metal garden boxes or garden frames that are taller. But for right now, a, a temporary fix is to use cedar pickets. These are picket, individual pickets that we got from Lowe's that are used, obviously you use them for fences and they're cedar, so they're good for outdoor use. And they'll, each one is eight feet, which is the length of my garden beds. So I think what I'm gonna do is just find where we've got ratted out garden bed sides and replace them with these cedar pickets. It shouldn't take me that long. There's a couple more sides that I'm gonna go through and replace. This is a good start, but now that we're in winterized mode, I may consider just stacking higher versions of the garden beds. So maybe getting several more pickets and making these garden beds three, four, five pickets high. We'll see. That's a decision I don't need to make right away, but getting started and at least replacing the ratted out boards, I think was a necessary first step.
better. Ready? Oh, hang on. Right. You, you know, I might want to move side. this over just a little bit. You want to let me know Which when you're side? ready? Uh, you're My, to, to me, yeah. yeah. Right about there. Should be good. Huh? Maybe back an inch. I think we talked about it in the last video, but we decided to add an additional water system, a uh, water collection system, rainwater collection system, next to our barn. So last week I installed this gutter. I had to make the decision, do I want barrels, like we're using on our house over there, or do I want something a little bigger and ro more robust and a lot more gallons, IBC tote. We decided to go with an IBC tote. There's a local supplier that sells rebottled IBC totes, so the cage is used but the bottle inside is brand new and you can tell it's brand new by check this out a peel and seal in the top of your pill bottles and you you know it's new because the peel and seal is <laughs> it's brand new i'm i'm positive of that so uh, there was a couple of decisions that i needed to make in terms of how how i mount this thing and initially i was thinking of actually building a wooden platform four by fours posts four by four posts that i would drill into the ground you know put quickcrete down and make a nice kind of solid wooden platform and that it didn't take long before i realized that would not be an option because there is so much bedrock around the barn here i would need to get a professional auger in order to drill through this rock not something i wanted to do plus you need to when you build a wooden platform you need to take into consideration that when this thing is filled with water it's over a ton this is 275 gallons so i i don't know the exact math but it's over 2500 pounds it's very heavy so any sort of platform that you build needs to be able to take the weight of over a ton of weight so I was like, you know what, let's just make it simple. I'm going to throw some gravel down, get some concrete blocks. Concrete blocks are made for this type of application. Uh, they could easily handle that weight and build a skirt around it. So I'm going to fashion some sort of wooden skirt. There's a lot of barn wood up in the hayloft that I may salvage and create just a little border wall around it. And the reason for that is twofold. Number one, this is ugly, <laughs> but number two, we don't want Henry crawling in underneath this gap here. Um, I just don't want him getting anywhere close to this uh, barrel, especially when it's filled up with water. So that'll be something I have to do here soon is build that skirt. So why is it even up here on the platform? Well, we want to make sure that it's higher, that the spigot is higher than the garden. And it is. Um, not only are we uphill, um, but this is, this is raised up enough so that there'll be enough pressure to bring that water down into the garden. Um, we'll get an adapter 
for garden hose and hook that up there. I, I'm excited. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm pretty pumped about this thing. What's next? Well, obviously we need to get a downspout uh, figured out that will go into the actual tank itself. I'll probably put a mesh screen up there to keep mosquitoes out and some sort of flexi hose thing that I can, I can use to uh, bring the water from the downspout into here and also cover it up because this thing's translucent. So it'll pick up algae from the sun. I mean, that's obviously something we dealt with with our chicken water containers. There's two options. One, I can, I can take the bottle out of the cage and spray paint it black, which would look kind of tacky, but it would get the job done. Or two, get a shroud. They sell these shroud things for like 20 or 30 bucks on Amazon. That will cover the IBC tote. And it's got holes, obviously, for that inlet hole and for the outlet spigot. And I'll also need to fashion a overflow pipe. That's something I'll need to actually drill and figure that out. But that's something I'll probably knock out, knock out in the next few weeks. I don't know how much rain we're supposed to get for the rest of this season. But once we go into winter, the rain typically kind of chills out. And sometimes we even get snow. But when, come spring, this thing will fill up probably within one rainstorm. This thing will fill up. So having the whole project done by spring is my goal but just in terms of how it looks it'll probably be in the next few weeks i'll get this thing knocked out Hey, Dad. Hey. Lots, lots getting done this yes, week. Yes, yes. Slowly, slowly. Slowly, slowly, <laughs> but, but it's, I, it's getting done. Just, just like looking around and comparing this to what you started with when this was just kind of a dingy shed to keep plastic kids' toys in. It's starting to transform. It really is. It's looking really good. So what, what were the main projects this week? Uh, just working on the windows, the doors, uh, with your help, mm -hmm. uh, getting those mounted, getting those put in. Um, and right now I'm just putting a couple of doorknobs on, uh, so uh, nothing real special. Were there, were there challenges getting the doors mounted? Yeah, I don't, I don't know how much footage you got uh, with us, <laughs> you know, kind of strong arming the thing in, especially this door over here. One thing that we learned is... Uh, just how uneven this floor is. It's strange because kind of on this side of the shed, it's, it's more level. If you stick the level down, mm -hmm. the bubble is pretty close to the middle. Uh, but over here, uh, what I'm thinking is I, I may have jacked that corner up a little bit mm. too far. This side's not as bad, uh, but I'm going to have to do something over there, especially... I can kind of notice it when I walk over here. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's psychosomatic and I'm just Well, imagining. or it could be real. Now, it's, if you were to lower, if you were to, if you were to try and lower 
you know, put the jack up and lower it. Pick it up, lower it. My a little concern bit. is I've got so many things already mounted and nailed in, and we didn't we didn't know it was an issue until after we had, uh, you know, put the wrap on, which would have to come off because it would tear. Um, until after we put the window in, so at that point, I'm thinking instead of trying to trying to fix that corner and lowering it a little bit. I'm just I'm just gonna do my best to um, I don't know do something to make yeah. it as level as possible. Yeah, I I can see this whole frame that you've created here and getting the door plumb just so that could fall out of whack if you were to lower it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Well, you you mentioned something else that you did this week, and that's put wrap on at least in half of the. Yeah. Shed. Yeah. So everything on this side, this this particular shed, is wrapped uh, and ready for siding. So that will, that will, I think, be the next big project is getting the siding put up, and and that's when I think you'll really be able to kind of notice um, more of the transformation when you see that, um, and then follow it up with wrapping and siding that side. There. I'm not worried about windows and doors over there at this point. Then we'll look at doing some some work on the roof. And one thing to consider, I'm just now thinking of this. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's it's like June weather. It is. It's we're crazy. we're in mid November, and it feels like it's early June. Yeah, yeah it um, feels like a summer day. the The nights are crisp and a little cooler, but not much. Um, I could have kept growing. I could have kept the gardening season going for a while. Except for that spat. Of we had a spat of cold weather below for like freezing. a week. Yeah. Um, but boy, that's not the case. So like it's, I dare say it's nasty hot. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's, it's not, warm. It's it warm. Is, it's warm. But next week, and I say this, I, I say this with some hesitation in my voice because I don't want to jinx it. But next week, it's supposed to get down sub freezing again at least at night right. um and highs during during the day highs in the 50s much more seasonal much more seasonal um and so that's something that you're probably considering as you're doing the build yeah i don't think it will affect anything other than maybe like curing paint or yeah you know we talked about that a little bit yesterday the only only real concern i would have with outdoor activity is the actual painting of the siding Mm -hmm. I've, I've got a fair amount already painted, um, but I, I still need to buy more boards, more siding, mm -hmm. and get those painted. Um, and that, there can be an issue if the temperature gets down to a yeah. certain point. Otherwise, I, I, I don't know about you, Dad, but I'm welcoming it. I want, I want 30 degree nights it's, we're, and we're, 50 degree days. We're over, overdue, yeah. I think. Yeah. So, okay, well, this, this looks really good. Uh, siding is probably next. Our next yep. siding and trim yeah. is probably our next uh, step. And that you're probably going to require some assistance with, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. Getting those those boards mounted, um, we'll need your help with that. Alrighty, awesome. Well, thank you, Dad, for the update. You bet. I'm not sure why this thing makes me so excited, but I, I think. For me, it's the fact that I'm able to harness all the water that comes off of this roof and actually do something with it. It was just splashing on the ground here, and now I can actually turn it into water for my garden, water for my chickens and turkeys, and eventually pigs when we get them again. And it, it represents a level of independence, and I, I like that. It makes me excited. So a couple things to think about next obviously get the get the shroud it is as warm as it's been i do need to keep in mind that it is going to be getting cool again um, and we will have winter and the nights will be below freezing and i don't want there to be water in this over the winter i may set up the downspout and get it connected to the tank and test it out if there's another rain or two in the next few weeks but then drain it when it gets really cold and we actually get into the winter which I'm ready. Dad and I had <laughs> mentioned it. I'm ready for it. So anyways, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, lots of projects. They're keeping us busy. More on this next week. More on the shed next week. And until we see you then, remember, as always, slowly.
slowly.